Hey, y'all. All right, I know this is not exactly how you expect to see me. But uh, coming to you um, under the distress of illness. Yes, it seems to carry on regardless. So, unfortunately, I have, uh, seems that I have developed some bronchitis again. Happens, like, happens to me almost every year. Okay, but I'm not going to let that stop me. Um, not feeling, you know, 100%. I'm not even feeling 50% really, but I'm going to try to crank this video out because one of my viewers requested and I'm going to try to do the best I can for them, okay? So, um, talking today about crank no start conditions on a late model, I'm calling it late model, 87 Dodge D150. Uh, still has the, I'm assuming still has the, the computer set up with the two barrel carburetor. Yes. So in the eighties, they started using a computer on their carburetors, carbureted engines. <clears throat> the carburetor had some, had a couple little things it was feeding information to the, to the computer and it was controlling everything basically in the distributor one of these kinds of distributors here they uh, they do not have as you can see they don't have a vacuum canister out here their uh, their their advance is all taken care of by the computer so um, that's why there's, uh, all the little, uh, doodads, you know, on the carburetor, I'm sorry, on the carburetor that is feeding information to the computer. Now, let's get some stuff straight. Those computers are not set up for any kind of performance, really. I mean, if you want to have, like, dual exhaust and, uh, you know, something like that, maybe a cold air intake on it, and uh, that that's probably okay. But if you want to go, like, with a bigger cam or... You know, different intake manifold, something like that. Pretty well forget it. Okay. So, um, but the one who was posing the question, the viewer who was posting the question, he said that his 87, 318, will start, will turn over, but will not, it'll crank over, but it will not start. Okay. Let's go back to basics. Okay, that's where we need to start from, I feel like. <clears throat> Verify that you have every, all the players in place. You're going to have four different things you're going to have to look for. Okay, one, a lot of people say three. I say four, and I'll tell you why. You're going to have to have fuel. You're going to have to have fuel going down into the throat of the carburetor. Okay, it doesn't... You know, let's say you take your fuel line off right here and you got fuel coming out of the fuel pump. Okay. You got fuel to there. If you don't have fuel coming in here, it ain't going to make no difference. So make sure, look down in the carburetor, make sure you've got fuel coming out when you work the throttle linkage. Okay. So when you do that, it should be coming. Let me kind of arrange my light here. When you do that, and you work the throttle linkage, like this, you should be seeing fuel coming out.
we get ah you see that's the accelerator pump you should have fuel coming out like that one does but down in there see how it is yeah all right but that's what i'm talking about so make sure you got fuel going into the throat of the carburetor so you got to have fuel now uh the other thing you got to have is you got to have spark of course you're going to have air because air is going to come right through that carburetor so you got to have spark so we need to uh get ourselves coal here hey look here there's coal how about that so we need to get a coal we need to hook that up wire that son of a gun up now if you're concerned about this little ballast resistor i wouldn't be that's more of noise suppression radio noise suppression okay rfi you know radio frequency issues and that sort of thing but of course you got to have a coil wire you got to have your wire coming from the distributor over to the coil give me just a second i'll hook those up okay i got my coil hook hooked up mostly but you're going to have to have a positive and a negative okay your negative goes to goes to the distributor at least on this one it does okay now for yours yours are probably going to have has wiring like this right here okay so you'll have you'll have this sort of set up right here okay and this will plug into a plug into a plug that will run back to the computer which on yours the computer is probably going to be under this fender right there now um when you have that kind of setup you're going to need to uh you're going to need to keep a couple of things in mind that that is basically it's a lean burn type computer lean burn type computers they they aren't the greatest in the world as you've probably heard from some people like in the forums and stuff like that they'll tell you they're not the greatest and they aren't they're, they're kind of lackluster but uh when they go out that's it you know they they go out pretty sudden and they don't come back <laughs> so uh now i noticed it said in there that you replaced coal and replaced distributor replaced some other parts uh but make sure it make sure you're getting fire easy way to do this very easy very very easy number one plug wire left front side of the engine okay this is always going to be the left side of the engine regardless okay stand in front of it doesn't matter it's still the left side of the engine so what am i, what am I going to do next real simple very simple grab myself a spark plug old spark plug don't matter yeah here we go be for anything grab a spark plug hook it up right back <laughs> so get yourself a spark plug jam it in there into your plug wire make sure that the plug is on some good solid metal not you know something covered in paint or rust and then have somebody turn the engine over <laughs> okay have somebody turn the engine over watch right here if you have spark guess what you've got spark <laughs> so now we've covered two things fuel and spark now let's back up a minute let's say okay wait a minute what if we're not getting spark here's something the easy easy thing to do now ignition coils 
are probably the biggest culprit of that. Okay? Here's one way to kind of bypass everything. Get your coil to work temporary. Okay? Temporary. Not permanent. So, please do not do this long term. This is a temporary deal. Take some jumper wires. Run a jumper wire to your negative, si negative side and to the positive side of the coil. Then, run those jumper wires to a battery. Negative to negative, positive to positive. Okay? You'll have straight 12 volts going to your coil. Now, normally these coils like to operate with 6 to 7 volts. But in this case, you're going to be running it with 12 volts, straight 12 volts. It'll be okay just for starting purposes. Okay? All you want to do is just start it up. Try to start it up and see if it makes noise. If it pops, if it makes some noise or something like that, then you know, hey, I'm getting some fire. But, of course, you can go back and test this too. Okay? So, when you do that, you got your jumper wires, okay? Run to your battery. You got somebody, well, crank over the engine. Watch for spark. Now, if it tries to fire up, go ahead and let it fire up, okay? But, now, let's move on. Move into the other thing. You know, I noticed, you notice I said, you need four things. Air, fuel, spark. What's the, what's the fourth? Timing. You gotta have timing. If you don't have timing, and I do apologize I do apologize if my speech is a little bit uh, hampered or sounds weird. This mask is coming down on my uh, face, coming down on my nose. And uh, I'm trying to uh, filter out some of the pollen and the crap in the air out here. It's pretty rough out here, I'll just tell you. But anyway, carry on. Okay. So, let's focus on timing. All right. You had somebody. My cat over there startled me just a little bit. Okay, so you had somebody turning it over. All you got, though, you got spark. You got a little pop coming out of here, or maybe a pop coming out of the exhaust, or something like that. Maybe even some flames coming out of the carburetor. Okay, that tells me that happens, then that tells me that you've got timing issues. Check your ignition timing. This is not that hard, okay? So don't freak out. It's nothing to freak out over, okay? Let me get a light. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. Here we go. Here's our ignition timing marks. Let's see. You see them right there? Five degrees, five degrees, top of the center in the middle. Okay. Let me get the harmonic balancer turned over to where you can see the mark you need to be looking for. Be right back. Okay, y'all, I've got it turned over. I think that is the timing marks right there for top dead center. Let's look at my rotor button where it's pointing at. Here's my number one plug wire, right here, it goes to this tower, right there, so, and I'm 180 out, so, that mark isn't, that mark isn't my, uh, that mark down there isn't for being for checking the timing so i need to turn it over just a little bit more which is what i'm going to do as we get the camera set up so get over here I 
I must not be on a compression stroke. So you gotta get number one cylinder. Top dead center on the compression stroke. So I'm probably on the house. Okay, now let's look at the rotor button. So, there we go. We're right there. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. So, see, number one, right here. You can see right down there. We're on top dead center, compression stroke. The tip of the rotor, you can see on the distributor cap, it says, even has number one down there and has a rotation. And this cap can be used on the big block or the small block. So there's one, number one right there, or right here. So right here is for the small block. As you can see, my rotor button is now pointing to the number one tower on my distributor cap. Not the number one cylinder, number one tower on the distributor cap. So don't let that trip you up when you read it in the book. Okay. Now, if your timing is correct then <clears throat> there shouldn't be anything holding that engine back as far as starting up there should not be nothing okay so as long as you've got spark you got fuel you got air and you got timing and of course compression then you should be okay this this engine that engine should have no issues firing right up and running like a top okay so uh but check those things or have a mechanic that you trust check them okay i was reading your post and it seems like there's a couple of them two or three of them that are just wanting to uh seems like they're wanting to just kind of throw some parts on it and hope for the best or uh, something along those lines they don't want to invest any time in uh, diagnosing the problem so these are not that hard to set up they are not that hard to figure out they are not small block Chevrolets they do have the same firing order but these if you look distributor rotation is right there on the intake manifold okay so like i said these are not hard engines to fire up get them fired up and get them running okay anyway if you have any further questions or anything else you know what to do just post them down below in the comment section and I will do my best to answer your questions as soon as I possibly can. Anyway, I hope this video answers your questions about your truck. And I hope you're able to get it back on the road and start enjoying it very soon. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for all the likes, the shares, and the subscribes. Oh, and about the subscribes. Wow. Up over 800 subscribers now. 820 subscribers. It's just amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Truly, really, seriously. I really mean that. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. Oh, one more thing. If you're trying to troubleshoot your trucks, please get some manuals okay where do i get mine 
used bookstores. If there's any used bookstores in your area, start going there. eBay, Craigslist, uh, Amazon, just about anywhere that sells stuff. They will sell you these damn things, okay? Yard sales, flea markets, you name it, okay? Yeah, a lot of the parts stores don't sell them anymore, but here's something else. Try to find the older ones, okay? Don't be trying to find brand new ones. I mean, if you do happen to run across a brand new one, I'll take it before nothing. But if you can get a hold of an old one, even if it is a Haynes, not too damn bad. Not too damn bad at all. So, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to cut this off. Getting harder to breathe out here. So, thank you all so much. Really do appreciate all that you do. So, let's keep it up. Let's keep going. And uh, thank you all. God bless. Have a great one.